This presentation describes updated requirements on nitrosamine impurities in question and answer way for easy understanding. Are all products to be reviewed? All authorized human medicinal products containing chemically synthesized apis are to be reviewed. Risk-based approach can be used and prioritize the evaluations and confirmatory testing. Additional risk factors should also be considered for products containing sartans with a tetrazole ring. What factors should be considered in prioritizing the risk evaluation? Consider factors such as the maximum daily dose taken, duration of treatment, therapeutic indication and number of patients treated. For example, medicinal products with higher daily dose and those for chronic use may take priority. Who should perform risk evaluations? MAS together with API and finished product manufacturers are required to perform risk evaluations using quality risk management principles, as outlined in HQ9 guideline. The principles described in HM7 guideline in relation to toxicology assessment, control strategy and changes to the manufacturing processes for active substances should be applied. If the risk of nitrosamine impurity formation had been assessed during the development phase of the API slash finished product manufacturing processes, the information from the assessment can be used to support this evaluation. What are the considerations during risk evaluation? Risk of nitrosamine as forming in the API synthetic process taking into consideration the combination of reagents, solvents, catalysts and starting materials used, intermediates formed, impurities and degradants. Potential risk of nitrosamine contamination e.g. from recovered materials such as solvents, reagents and catalysts, equipment, degradation, starting materials or intermediates. Potential of nitrosamine formation during the manufacture of the finished product and slash or during storage throughout its shelf life. Confirmatory testing activities should start as soon as the risk of presence of nitrosamine is identified in risk evaluation and should begin immediately for products considered at high risk. Verify by testing a representative number of samples of the relevant starting material, intermediate, API or finished product. The number of batches slash samples tested should be scientifically justified. Methods for determination of NDMU and NDEU in sartans have already been developed by the official medicines control laboratories and are available for reference on the EDQM website. Appropriately sensitive analytical methods for determination of the specific nitrosamine as in other medicinal products containing API other than sartans should be developed and validated accordingly before testing. What are the other nitrosamine as could potentially be present in medicinal products? Depending on the manufacturing process used, other nitrosamine as could potentially be present in medicinal products. Some of these nitrosamine as e.g. N-nitrosoethylisopropylamine EIPNA, n nitrosoethylisopropylamine DIPNU and 4-methyl nitrosoaminobutanoic acid and MBA were identified in sartan APIs. Others e.g. n nitrosodibutylamine NDBA, n nitrosomethylphenylamine NMPA were hypothesized based on the sartan manufacturing process. When should MAHs report to competent authorities? Depending on the manufacturing process used, other nitrosamines could potentially be present in medicinal products. MAHs should inform the concerned competent authorities when the risk evaluation is concluded. The risk evaluation of all products should be concluded at the latest within six months of the publication of information on nitrosamines for marketing authorization holders. In addition, MAHs should inform the competent authorities as soon as possible if tests confirm the presence of nitrosamine, irrespective of the amount detected. 
When should MAHS report to competent authorities? The immediate risk to patients should be assessed and appropriate action taken to avoid or minimize the exposure of patients to nitrosaminas. Immediate communication to authorities should be ensured in case of findings indicating an immediate risk to public health. MAHS are required to use dedicated templates and contact points as outlined on the EMU and CMDH websites. What limits will apply for nitrosamine as detected in any products? Acceptable intake AIs on which temporary limits should be based have been defined for NDMU and NDEU impurities in the Article 31 Referral Assessment Report. Furthermore, for NMBA, DIPNU and EIPNU impurities additional AIs calculated by the Safety Working Party are available for reference in the EMA website. HTTPS slash WWW and slash documents slash other slash temporary interim limits and MBA dipnu IPNU impurities SART blood pressure medicines underscore and PDF. Long term acceptable limits of nitrosamine as for non sartan products are still under consideration. What limits will apply for nitrosamine as in medicinal products based on lifetime and less than lifetime use? Interim limits calculated for a lifetime treatment and based on a maximum daily dose of the medicine. These limits are not applicable for batches where more than one of the above and nitrosamine as has been identified simultaneously. Such batches should be rejected. If this interim limit is not exceeded, competent authorities shall be informed on the levels of the impurities detected. Where the interim limit is exceeded for medicinal products with a limited treatment period or intermittent treatment e.g. once a week, higher daily exposures may be used as an adjusted interim limit. Calculate adjusted interim limits for impurities present in medicinal products as per following table. What are the MAH responsibilities? If MAHs identify that changes are necessary in their production process and slash or product formulation, MAH should submit application for a variation on amendments to the marketing authorization. MAHs and API manufacturers should work together to take precautionary measures to mitigate the risk of presence of nitrosamines during the manufacture and storage of all medicinal products containing chemically synthesized APIs. MAHs must ensure that robust risk evaluations are carried out appropriately by the relevant manufacturing authorization holders and API manufacturers. What are the currently identified sources for presence of nitrosaminas? Use of sodium nitrite or other nitrosating agents in the presence of secondary tertiary amines or quaternary ammonium salts within the same or different process steps if carryover can occur. Use of sodium nitrite or other nitrosating agents in combination with reagents, solvents and catalysts which are susceptible to degradation to secondary or tertiary amines within the same or different process steps if carryover can occur. Use of contaminated raw materials in the API manufacturing process e.g. solvents, reagents and catalysts. Use of certain packaging materials. Nitrosamine contamination has been observed by one MAH in a finished product stored in blister. The MAH has hypothesized that the lidding foil containing nitrocellulose printing primer may react with a mine printing ink to generate nitrosaminas, which would be transferred to the product under certain packaging process conditions e.g. during heat sealing blistering processes via vaporization and condensation onto the drug product. Use of recovered materials e.g. solvents, reagents and catalysts including recovery outsourced to third parties who are not aware of the content of the materials they are processing and routine recovery processes carried out in non-dedicated equipment. Use of contaminated starting materials and intermediates supplied by vendors that use processes or raw materials which may allow nitrosamine formation. 
cross-contaminations due to different processes run on the same line and due to operator-related errors such as inadequate phase separations, degradation processes of starting materials, intermediates and drug substances including those induced by inherent reactivity in combination with carryover of sodium nitrite or other nitrosating agents. This could potentially occur also during finished product formulation or storage. For additional information, please refer questions and answers on information on Mitrosamines for marketing authorization holders EMA slash CHMP slash 428592 slash 2019 Rev 2 20th December 2019.